group hug. Please come and join me on the sofa. Today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Nicole Curti and she is Chief Operating Officer at Stanhope Capital based in Geneva. Welcome Nicole. Perhaps you'll tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and about the organisation. Thank you very much uh, Karen, nice to see you. So as you said, I'm Chief Operating Officer of the group and partner also at Stanhope Capital. Uh, we are a group with 135 employees with offices in uh, Europe, in London, Geneva and Paris, but also uh, recently acquired a business in the US. So we're now also present in the US. Um, and we manage uh, money for private and institutional slash charities um, clients. Amazing. And for viewers who are watching, if you enjoy this session, please, please press the thumbs up. And if you subscribe, we'll let you know about other sessions with people within the industry globally. So, Nicole, tell us a little bit about this U.S. acquisition. That sounds very interesting. Yes. So it's a company called Forbes uh, Wealth Management, which we acquired uh, end of uh, last year. And basically, it's a business that uh, manages money for private clients in the U.S. And so we have partnered up with them, which is great because it opens up for us the entire U.S. market. Amazing. So I'm delighted to say you were a winner in our recent Power Women Awards. So perhaps you could give the viewers a lowdown on your leadership style and the guiding principles you live by. Um, I know you've got three locations now, so I'm guessing... Um, you've got more international experience at this stage. Yes, so actually we have six locations now because we added uh, you know, that US business where we have three offices in the US. Um, I think one of my guiding principles is really to empower people. I think when you're a leader and a manager, you need to empower the people within your team uh, so that they can uh, take on responsibilities. Obviously you should set clear goals so that people know where they're heading to and then give them the freedom to choose how they will reach that goal. Very interesting. And what are the challenges that Stanhope is facing as a business? You've talked about expansion, which notoriously can go right or wrong. Culturally, there can be difficulties. So what challenges does the whole organization face that you're helping with? I think that's exactly the challenge that I would uh, foresee that you just mentioned. I think there is an arbitrage between growing and growing too fast and still continue to serve your clients uh, in a very personalized and, uh, and customized way. So it's definitely something we need to you know, be uh, wary of for the future. Advice to other women, how did you get where you are today and how should other women proceed? Anything you could add? That's a very good question. Um, you know, I've been uh, raised by very um, powerful women. So my grandmother was already uh, a doctor. Um, my mom was one and very independent uh, women. So I think that has helped a lot. And then it's also the fact to just, uh, you know, believe in yourself, voice up and speak up. It's sometimes it's not easy when you're in an in a all men meeting to raise your voice and and share your opinion, but I think that has helped me a lot. Uh, yeah, I believe in that as well, actually. Be brave and talk up. So another question, talk as your uh, operating officer, talk us through your technology and the importance of your systems in terms of internally and also with your clients. Also a very good question. It's probably one of the most important challenges for us in the coming years, technology. As an independent wealth manager, you sort of sit in between you know, the banks and the clients. And obviously banks invest a lot of money into technology, we're a much smaller player and therefore it is also more difficult for us because we need to aggregate the data that comes from different banks into our own sort of world and system. And there are many players out there in the market, but it is not yet very clear um, who the real solution drivers will be that can help you aggregate data from the different banks and then basically communicate with your clients with you know, modern ways of communication like an app on your phone um, and things like that. So it's clearly something we're studying uh, and we have invested a lot in technology over the past few years. 
And do you have any advice on that score? Investing in technology is something that every business is, due, is doing, but there seems to me a lot of duplication and lessons that could be learned by sharing. So is there anything that you could add to this that would help others? Absolutely. I agree in the sharing, and that's the problem. Our industry is, is not well organized because we're smaller players, not like the banks who maybe have a, a better way of organizing themselves. So in Switzerland, we have created uh, five or six years ago an alliance called the Alliance of Swiss Wealth Managers, where the biggest independents um, sort of join together into this association. And in that association, we share our know how on the technology front, on the operational front, in different solutions that we use um, and that you know, all the independents have to start sometimes reinventing the, the wheel. So we're trying to share information. So that's how we do it in that association, which I think makes sense. And we're trying to actually widen that uh, also and to go abroad at some point, which would make sense. Interesting. And Switzerland is renowned for being one of the early adopters or countries involved with Bitcoin and crypto um, and ETFs in Canada and also today an announcement in Brazil have become a big thing, not the US. But have you any thoughts on that topic? Yes, it's a very topical topic. Um, many of our, not many, but some of our clients, um, you know, have asked us over the last two years uh, about investing into cryptocurrencies. And we've, we've always said no, 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 because it wasn't clear to us. Um, there is no real market, there is no transparency, there is no real pricing or dividend payments, you know, that you could have. Um, but we have a few clients who decided anyways to invest into uh, crypto and they obviously did really, really well. Um, and now we're looking at all these solutions like the Canadian ETF. I didn't know about the Brazilian, so very interesting. I'll have a look at that. Um, and then we will hopefully find a way of investing, which is also a way that needs to be secure for the client, because we've all heard about uh, that gentleman who lost uh, his 10 uh, password codes and, uh, in, in the US and lost millions of his uh, personal wealth. Yes, it's, uh, there's a new thing of doing kind of fake uh, Twitter profiles and pretending it's someone famous like uh, Elon Musk or the Winklevoss brothers and saying, well, we will give you Bitcoin if you send us your Bitcoin first. But it's all, they call it rug pulls in the industry and scams. So very wise to be careful of that. So the, the Swiss economy is renowned for its government um, and the way it governs the people and businesses. So is there something that you can add on that score that helps Stanhope being a business operating there? And also perhaps you would finish off by telling us something about art and Stanhope. I think you have a, an internal philosophy about art that perhaps the viewers don't know about. Uh, I think in Switzerland, Switzerland is really one of the largest markets for the independent asset managers. After the UK, France is also starting. The regulation uh, has been changing in Switzerland to actually regulate these independent players. We now are um, supervised by the FINMA. Um, so as of this year, we're supervised like any in bank, which creates a bit more um, work on the compliance side. But on the other side, it gives a lot of reassurance and guarantees to clients that we now need to have really institutional processes on how we invest and we're regulated by a, a, a real uh, supervisory authority. So I think that's a really good reason to, to be doing business in Switzerland. About the art, um, I don't know exactly what you're referring to. I know in London, um, we had some clients uh, give us uh, their artwork, uh, which we were exposing in our offices. Funny enough, in Switzerland, we had the same. Uh, I, I have a, a client who's a very um, large art collector. So he gave us uh, some of his artwork, which we're displaying in our office. Um, and now we just renewed it because we're supporting this uh, young, talented um, African artist. Um, so we're exposing his, uh, his art in our office, uh, which is very colorful and uh, clients really appreciate it. 
Oh, that's absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much, Nicole. It's been a pleasure to chat with you today. And we look forward to seeing you again soon when times are better. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye, Karen. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to tune in to our live sessions Tuesdays and Fridays at 11.30. See you then.